On today's episode, we are going to be repairing this 1946, a 2020. It's a turbine. Well, it's a model of a turbine. Made, you know, this made for the Pennsylvania Railroad. This one hasn't worked in a long time. We're gonna get her going again. Hello, I'm Ron with Classic Model Trains. I got this viewer out there, guy that's been watching the channel for a long time. His name is Norman. He reached out to me and he said, I, I got this locomotive, I need, you to, I need you to do some work to it. I said, what for? I go, I make videos on how to fix locomotives. Watch a video, you know, and then you, you, no, he says, no, nope, I, I want you to fix it. He said, this locomotive is really important to me. It used to belong to my dad. His dad had passed away. Norman, he's 45 years old right now. He drives the big rigs out there. He's got a beautiful Kenworth T660. He hauls heavy stuff on, sometimes even hauls rail, he told me here yesterday. Norman said for his entire life, he's never seen this locomotive run. He told me that when his mom married his dad back in 65, she said it didn't really run before that either. Well, he, you know, as a, as a memorial remembrance for his dad, he wants this locomotive running pretty bad. So I said, well, ship her up here. And we'll we'll give her a heck. This video is gonna launch on the fourth of July. It's gonna be up that day. It's our Independence Day, they tell us. Independence, though, did a little research on it. Come to find out, that's just the day we said, you know what, Britain, go, go away. We don't really like you anymore. We we had to fight. We had to fight them for like three more years before we won our battle. You know, our battle for independence, and became independent. So this should be like the beginning, our big mouths got us in a lot of trouble with the world's largest army, and then we we kicked their butt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, let's take a look at this thing. See what it looked like when I got it? Let's get started. Hey, I wanna let you guys, I wanna let you guys in on a little secret. Shh, don't tell anybody, all right? It's just between, okay? I've never worked on one of these before. To tell you the truth, Almost everything that you ever see me make a video on, I've never worked on it before. I'm going through these things the very first time along with you. Now, some of you Lionel guys out there that have come across this channel, there might be some of you out there that are master Lionel mechanics. You're gonna see me make some mistakes. I left them in, because that's we all learn from mistakes too. So as the video's going along and you see something, you went, oh, that's, uh, just, just settle down, yep, especially you over there. Yes, you back there. Yes, you're always the kind of the hot one. Just, just wait it out before you start commenting, because it'll, it'll, I'll eventually get it worked out. You'll find out. Not true story. Let's take a little look at this thing before we get started on it. This hook back here for the tender, it got damaged in shipping. This ladder's bent a little bit. The boiler cover, it, it fell off. And it looks like it's supposed to come off. This boiler's got about 40 years worth of scub on it. We need to get in there. We gotta see why why it won't run. What's going on? What's happening here? So I gotta dig out my man size tools here. A full size screwdriver. Cause we got some monsters that I can see hiding out. Down under here, there's two screws here. Screw up here underneath the front of the boiler. Let's just see if that gets the body off. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just seeing. We are just going to give it, give it everything I got. Little paint mixer cup. The painting aisle to put the pieces parts in as we take it apart. Screw number two. Screw number three. Yep. Anything, anything at all. Oh, sure. Yeah, we get it. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, no. What's going on here? Look at the size of that light bulb in there. What in Lord's name? Oh, it fell out. Shh. Oh, great. That makes it hard to work on when I when I didn't take it apart. Oh, look at this. Sure, that dock locks in there. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> that'll be nice to clean up. Look at this monster. It is really bad. Here's a wire. Everything is twisted together on. Well, that looks like it should be easy enough, huh? This would go down here, and then it's held on by the screw up in the front. It just fell, fell out. 
here's our reversing unit, which is really dirty. I'm gonna get some track and a transformer out here so we can put some juice to it and see what's happening. Well, it's good to see that the light works. And this is a little slow to respond. Oh, did you see? It's smoking like a bugger. Did you see that? It's kind of like its ground connection ain't very good. Everything's working on it like I would sort of like, yeah. I just think it needs a really good cleaning. It was arc and you heard it? Yeah, very unhappy. I think this is going to be able to come right around. Lionel Atomic Precision Motor. We got to take it apart more though. I want to be able to clean clean it all, get it get it done. Front truck. Oh sure, there's a spring underneath there. Turn this truck. Front truck. Take the smoker unit out. I don't know if that's a smoker or not. Unless you just drip the juice in there and it just runs all over the light bulb and smoke. Ah, that sounds like a silly way, doesn't it? I'm guessing this motor, there's two pretty healthy screws right over here. One's on this side, one's over on this side. Oh yeah. Little, little ones with lock washers that don't look like they really fit. Dirty, messy, the filth. I see screws here at the front of this and there's screws over here, I'm gonna have to get a smaller screwdriver. It's weird. Underneath of this E unit, it's buried down in here, and I'm hoping that popping these out, we're gonna be able to get that E unit out for cleaning, cleaning time. More out, more out. That must go down to the yeah. Two brass gears, this has got to be the pickup. Well, this shouldn't be, that's the, that looks like it's going to the, and if it is, this should not be just floating in the wind. It should be protected from shorting out. Two screws on these pickups, and this thing has been run. These have got significant wear marks in them. One more out. Yes, what are those? Little insulators right there. So bush, they're spacers. I guess so you can't squeeze that down too much. Right there is our pickup. So we are going to unsolder. Warm up the gun, Clyde. With well, as much oil that's on this thing, I'm thinking if it just was cleaned really well, it would probably come around. And this, of course, needs to be corrected. That's in really bad shape. Really. Let's get all this scuzz off. That wasn't bad at all. Let's get this rear truck out of here. It's hogging everything up. Straighten this out because it got bent in shipping. Here we go. Yes. Some more. Oh. Okay. We'll work on that. We can. Oh, God. Rear truck. And there's a lot of parts to this. I can see these pickups right here from this piece right down there in between these wheels. So we want to take the screw out right here. This screw right here, and this spring looks like it's, it's flopping in the wind here. There's something, something different that should be going on. That screw, and there's a spring, it's, it's in there. I probably, there, see that? Oh my God. This has been over, over lubricated. They used a little bit more than too much on this. Definitely. This here does not act like a screw. Is that thing bent? No. Lots of cleaning time here. Q-tips, scrapes, stuff. We've gotta get every, every single piece on this. We've got to get cleaned up. Lionel's turbine. Now, I, I, I do a bunch of doing the, the Google work on the interweb, try to do all the research I can, and some, sometimes the research, it, it, 
It doesn't jive. It doesn't link up. Some guy will say something and somebody else will have a little bit different. So sometimes, my, you know, I read the wrong guy's article and I say the wrong stuff. I try. I do. Best I can tell about this particular locomotive, this one's a 1946, the first year that they came out because of the way the smoker works on it. It's got that light bulb in it. After that, they didn't use them anymore. Now, I read that these things were in production from 46 to 49. And then I also read that the last one come off the line in 1955. So it's somewhere in between there, but the best I can tell. Four, five different variations. This one here is the 2020. It was sold at an 027 set. It's an O gauge, but it's got the 27 inch radiuses, you know. They got other ones out there that were sold in O gauge sets. And the O gauge had bigger radiuses. 31, 36, 48, 72. Their cab numbers are 671, 681, 682. So there's four different numbers out there for the Lionel O gauge stuff. These were great sellers for them. They did excellent marketing on them. These things took off and they're still very collectible to this day. Guys out there, they, they want them. These are, these are desired. None of the 2020s that were ever made ever came with the magnet traction on them. Turns out they don't need them. They, they, they weigh so much and they're so long, they do an excellent job of pulling long loads without it. Curious as to what this is. This looks like some sort of field mod that you can do. I wonder if that's like a lockout. Are there brushes underneath, underneath these right here? These are bulky. Oh, yep. Yep, there they are, and they are oil felled also. I need another tray. I filled this one up already. There's so much, so much stuff. Another brush holder, it's gonna be under here with some oily brushes. That armature, the commutators, got scub on it. Take these two screws here and we'll be able to get the back of this motor off. Second screw. Why this is just flapping in the wind. Seems like that should go to something. It's got to electrify this coil right here in order to get the magnet to do its job. Those can come out and I believe once we take these off, this electromagnet, it would, it would come off. Do I want to? It's interesting. I thought these were studs that went all the way through. They are. Interesting. Yes. No. Yeah, come on. Yes. So, that's the electromagnet right there. We're going to have to find out where that wire goes. That could be some of our issue. We can really get in here and root around and clean this out. At least we can get up in here and service this bushing we can oil that since this is all disassembled get in here and oil this you know squeeze it it's free it does what it's supposed to do i'm gonna start cleaning this up and then i'll show you the highlights of cleaning it up when i'm done there's so much on this thing i'm 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 just gonna ultrasonic cleaner it it's it's so bad oop out of my eye A lot of parts here. This doesn't even have the motor. This is just a chassis stuff right here. A couple hours of cleaning. A lot of Q-tips. A lot of odorless mineral spirits. We're gonna start putting this thing back together. Cleaning details. Well, with this here, since I, I couldn't get down into these gears real good, you know, I toothbrush and, and the soap and mineral spirits and stuff, but I had to end up, you know, scraping out all the old oil with a toothpick and wipe it off on a brush and clean 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 the wheels you know I used a stainless steel this little brush here and kind of gave them all a little a little loving cleaned up the trucks the same way they had a lot of old grease that was stuck on them this is interesting this light bulb it's got a nip it's got a dimple this is a specially made light bulb by General Electric for Lionel. 
So you drop one of them smoke pellets down the down the app, down the chimney, down the smoke stack, as it sits in here and makes makes the light do its thing. Very interesting. Start assembling this thing here. I've cleaned up all this with all the oil that was on them. Got some resid. I mean, this thing was just completely way over oiled, as usual. They, you know, that happens. That's what the, the things and stuff. Put this down inside of there. Then our roller pickups are gonna go on. They make all their all their juice contact right there. Then we got these little O-rings right here. So they're gonna go down in this hole to help keep this thing from shorting out on the chassis. And then this feller's gonna go on. Then we got these little sweethearts right here. Lock washer on the little bolt. Little bolt, it's gotta get all centered up on these. Everything's gotta get in the hole. Give that a snuggin. I'm just gonna test this right now. I'm on horseshoe mode. Now, you know, we got we got ground, but we don't want these to be grounded. Sure, yeah, yes, yeah, perfect. That is, that's what I wanted. Now these trucks, I guess since I'm here, we'll just, we'll just put them on. Go sitting like that. We got one of these fancy shoulder bolts here. It's just gonna go down into this area. Not too tight. You don't wanna break that off. This one here, we got the hook straightened out. We got the steps straightened out. Slip him in. Like so. Another shoulder bolt. What is this hair? Now I just clean, where did that come from? Since we're here, I'm just gonna oil everything. Just a little bit. These rollers, they need some love. Come in from this other side, let it drip down in there. These axles, they need they need some love. I'm gonna so I'm gonna push them up a little bit and give each axle a drink. I'm doing this at, a, at an angle, so I'm hoping that you know the oil will kind of roll down into the bushing. These guys, they'd like to see some lubrication again. Come through, do it on the other side. See how that's all quiet now? Oh my, quieted it right down. These guys here, they they want oil too, and they've actually got these little bosses where the oil goes. You can, it's super easy to oil the trucks. Look at that. Oh, noisy. Four, five, six. Yeah. That is what I'm talking about. Here's some S2 turbine fun facts for you. Baldwin, they're the ones that crank this thing out. There's only one. And the Pennsylvania Railroad, it, it was built for them. They gave it the number 6200. Came out in 1944. It was the largest direct drive steam turbine locomotive in the whole wide world. The only, this, the only one, biggest one. A lot of other people made them. You can check it out on Wikipedia. Just type in turbine steam locomotive, you get all kinds of stuff. This came out with a wheel arrangement of a 686. They didn't really want the front truck and the rear truck being so big, but the lightweight material that they really needed to make the strong stuff, they wanted it to be a 484. They, because of the war, they didn't. They had to use big heavy steel, so they had to throw a couple extra axles in there to carry the weight around. The Pennsylvania Railroad 6900 had 6,900 horsepower available to it, and it could easily do over 100 miles an hour. With the tender on, this thing came in at 123 feet long. This particular locomotive had a marine turbine inside of it. And even though it was a lot simpler with the gears and stuff like that than a generator of its day, it had a very fatal flaw. Very, very inefficient at slow speeds. It hogged up the fuel like nobody's business putting around. Although it was unbelievably efficient at high speeds. But due to that problem that it, you know, wasn't any good just doing, getting going and stuff, no, nope. they only made one and that was it. Unfortunately, the sole, sole survivor, it, they got rid of it in 1949 and it hit the scrappers in 1952. Dang it. We got this shaft and it's gonna go in like this. And this little block goes in the front and this big block goes in the back multi-purpose synthetic grease and I want grease down on these gears it 
that, that looks like it's too much. We're gonna roll it, get a little more, get them on the back side. This is all gonna be sealed up, so it's, it's not gonna fling around. But you know, don't use that as an excuse to over grease it. But you can be a little heavy on the hand. Grease on the end of these axles. There's no thrust washers on there. This worm worm gear, drive line with a worm gear on it. So we're not going to see these too much more ever again. So as we do all that, give us an opportunity to put a little grease on the worm. Run that around in there. Catch this big gear right here. Be our motor drive gear. Now we have this little beauty, and this insulator was on one side for some reason. I don't know why it doesn't have two. Maybe it is, and somebody, somebody lost it. I don't know because these shoulder bolts, one's longer. You can see here, and one is shorter, longer, shorter. So that's just how this goes. Use this toothpick to get that. Dang thing line, there it is, right? That's what I'm looking for. Get this little feller down in there. Yep, making sure that the shoulder cleared both of them pieces. So the guy's gonna hide out right over in here. And tighten her up. Now this actually took me about four minutes to fight it to get it in there, but through the magic of editing, I shortened that up for you. Make it a little more this thing. Well, I just remembered that this little spring right here he lived over on this side and I got to figure out what it does and how it works and why and everything else. So I get to take all this apart again and figure out how that spring goes in over there. and What's its main purpose in life? Hold this up, I guess. Um, well, I've about got this whole thing right here figured out. That is the flapper that moves up and down underneath the smoke box and makes the smoke waft out with the revolution of the wheels. And this spring that I just broke, because it was bent and it wasn't springing enough. So I've got some hand railing stuff and I'm just curious if maybe I can bend up a, a new spring. So that's what I'm gonna attempt to do because this one, no, it, it died. Just took the old magic calipers here, measured this one, found that I had some hand railings, some stainless steel for modeling HO hand railings. Took it, bent it around a drill bit, and we got ourselves a new spring now. I got a little excited and put this, put this in completely, completely wrong. Wondered why it just kept flopping around. So you gotta put that screw through the truck and then put it in the chassis. Just learning things. That'll keep that from flopping around so much. But what I really wanted to talk about was we got this flapper to flap finally. After I made that spring, which is sitting right down in here, and on this axle, you can see him right here, there's a pin. See that guy? And when that pin is just rolls around, it makes this, this flapper, this puffer, puff, 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 puff. So after I made the spring, then these little side brackets right here, they were bent. So the thing hung up on the frame and it went up and then it stayed up. So it was in and out, in and out with this little screw right here and this little screw over here, adjusting these levers, getting this thing completely flat and straight and level and plumb. And now we've got a functioning flapper for the smoke unit. Kind of wanted to almost give up on it because it was a pain. Very bad, very much so. Hassle. I think I spent about three hours working on just that dang smoke flapper right there trying to get it to do what it's supposed to do. I had to go online and figure out what it was. I, I for the long I'm just like I've, I didn't know what it did. Thank God there's some forums out there guys have pictures that they put up and they show up on Google searches and you can find out about them. This little plastic insulator he goes down over this brass. I think it's shot. I think it I think it's shrunk on me. I think we need a fresh piece heat shrink and this will shrink up when we solder that back on and it's going to do its little job of keeping everybody insulated yep yep right there so now we can start to reassemble this whole concoction e unit fits in like this four bolts two here two over here those little fellers and they're probably going to be a pain 
I'm sure, especially the ones that are underneath over here. These four screws are in. This one here, you know, you got to kind of come in at an angle and screw because this is in the way. Hassle, hassle, hassle. So here's our motor all cleaned up. We can get in there and we can really, really lube her up now. I'm going to come in from behind this gear, try to get a little oil for this front shaft. Let her soak in there, get in there. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit back here on the back of this motor, there's another bearing right down in here. Get the lubins on it. Oh, that's sounds good. Put this electromagnet. We're going to slip him back in there. Got this one ground wire right here, which is sandwiched in between it. Send him all the way home. And this side just had a screw in it, which doesn't really go to anything. Just balances it out, I guess. Since we're in here, fiberglass pencil, commutator. Just give it a shine. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't really look like it needs it. And AC flows a lot easier than the DC low voltage stuff does, but we're just gonna give it all we can. Get the spring holders on, along with these little tubes right here. The old motor fits in there like that. I got two more screws left over. Doing pretty good. There ain't hardly anything extra in here. Maybe not those. I don't think it's those. I think it's these. Well, where did those go? They were in the motor bucket. Put these screws in the back of them nuts that were screwed in. Yes. Lots of screws on this thing. This fella right here, it's your reverse lockout. Yep. Yep. It's all the juice. No lever on it. So I make it look proto more prototypical. Motor mount screws. We're going to go down into here. Second one down over in here. Yes. And our smoking unit sits up in the front here. With a screw that holds it in, right there. It's got a pin that drops over. Yeah, absolutely. Now we got to work on getting our main juice hooked up. But then they don't give a guy very much room. We got just enough room to solder that back on. A little solder onto our hot pickup. Let it flow around in there. Making sure that our hot doesn't touch anything any place. Here's something neat about this light bulb. I already talked about this. Yeah, it's got that little hole right in there. So when you put this in, it's right underneath. And that's what makes the thing like get hot. And oh, it's that one. I like, the, I like what the engineers did there. Yes, I do. And we don't have any grease on this gear yet. So we're going to give it some. Liking it. Liking it. Our electromagnet wire. It's, it's broken off, and I'm willing to bet it goes right there because that's probably a primary pickup because the other one's going to ground. Go to horseshoe here, and if I get one of these rollers down there, and if I get this post, yep, and that was broken off. Is that why this thing didn't run? Very well could be. So I'll get him situated over here, do a little solder repair on it, Get the brushes in. Clean up inside these brush holders, these tubes here. They get dirty. No. This is big enough to find on the floor. Yep. Get up inside this. And then, of course, any oil that might be on the brushes has got to go away. So these will screw onto the motor back here. Everybody's hooked up. Locomotive's in place. Throw the juice to it. I suppose the first thing will happen is this is going to close. I want to give a little oil on that. You can see the plunger just right here. And as that plunges in, you know, it rolls stuff. I'd like to give this a little oil. This drum. Oh, still being crabby. Well, now that's just silly. Take these brushes out so I can take some voltage readings here. See what's happening. See if my electromagnet's electromagneting. That is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. There's no brushes in it, but you can see that this is, and then it smokes. 
We have to look at my wiring schematic. See, I found one of these right here online. I'm gonna have to do some some ohming out and, and read and go through and see what's happening here and over there and try to figure out because this is not right at all. Well, we've taken it back apart again, and this is the wire that pretty much is the juice coming up from the rollers, and it's it's loose on the board down in here. So that you know, and it provides electricity to the drum on this outside. And this one right here. So we need to get this junk wire out and another one soldered in and it'll end up, you know, being soldered to this. This wire ends up being soldered to this. This is where all the primary juice comes up from. Then our smoking unit wire, of course, gets soldered to that too. A lot of, a lot of solders being jammed right in that thing. That's not in a very good place. I took this all apart to check it. Just follow and follow the path. You look at the schematic and it's just like a road map. And you just chase down each wire and make sure you got good continuity going from here to here to here to here. It should be going over here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get this wire replaced with something better. A quick update on where we're at here. Here's the E unit. Here's the fingers. I had to take it apart. This this finger, it fell off. It, it was loose and then it, it, it was flopping around in there and it wasn't doing its thing. And now that I've got it taken apart, well, I can really clean the heck out of it now. Uh, and then, of course, reassembling it without losing my mind is the key. So, it's a it's, ah, tough one. Tough one. This thing has been fighting me the whole way. We'll keep on keeping on, though. Another problem I believe I was having was because this, this pickup that comes up here, and that damn E-unit is sitting so close to it, that, and all them junky wires, they were probably causing a bit of a short out. So I'm going to solder an extension onto it. I'm going to heat shrink some insulative material so I can lift this up out of the way. And I could tie all these wires together up here on top so that it just got more room to not short out. That's the key here. Yep. Alrighty, it's all back again for the third time. I had to put a, I had to put a bolt in this E unit here because I drilled this out. You know, when they assembled it and then they swedge the end, they swedge the ends over. So, and then, you know, you're done. You can't, you know, I suppose I could have tapped it and put a little teeny tiny screw in there. But I scavenged and found a bolt to hold that together. We got our wires soldered up again for the 18th time. This thing has been apart and put together more dang times, I tell you. What do we have? Oh, another thing I forgot. This, this wire over here that goes to this electromagnetic coil, sure, I had it soldered. Over here, I misread the schematic, which happens, and that's what was making the motor be funny. Now it's over here, and where it belongs, because I read the schematic for the 12th time. What are we going to experience today? So far? Oh yeah. Sure, <laughs> fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Rebuilt that E unit, that one finger, when I first soldered it up, there's four fingers in there. Four fingers? Four fingers, yeah. And this one here, when I soldered that new wire on it, well, then it loosened up and then it went over like this. Well, I had to take the whole dang thing apart to straighten it out and biggle the jig to make sure that that finger don't, 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 it don't you know, no, now, yes. That's what's going on here now. Maybe a guy can order a new E unit, but you know, I kind of like, kind of like fixing things, you know. So here's our rem our removed wires. So I'm gonna put a piece of heat shrink over them. We'll bend them down a little bit, out of the way. Let's get that boiler back on. Yeah, this particular 2020 also came with another surprise. It came with a whistling, a whistling tender. I said I'd get the thing all fixed up for him. This just doesn't do anything at all. But I'm not going to show you guys how to fix this because I've made a video of it already. Here, here's the what the uh, thumbnail looks like. I'll just go ahead and do this off camera and get this all shined up and working for the working, and uh, hopefully we'll have a complete, beautiful looking you. I got to tell you, I was about ready to give up on that dang thing. I. You know, I knew I, I didn't know what it was doing to figure out what to fix, and I stared at that schematic, and I finally figured out that dang little wire for that field coil. 
was in the wrong place. Hey, you guys know why they use electromagnets back in the day? Because rare earth permanent magnets were rare and expensive. So they could build these little electromagnets cheap, and throw them in everything, and ship them out the door. I'm glad I got it figured out, though, and got her running. Let's take a look at it and see what it looks like on the track. Well, here is what she looks like, all put back together. It's a long locomotive. Goodness gracious, it must be pushing 18 inches long. Wow. I happen to have a bottle of these laying around. That's what this thing wants to feed on. It's a pill. It does the... Let's throw one of these down as yap. See if we can get her sh 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 smoking away. We got her in the old neutralis right there. Let that bulb get that smoke going. She's got a little puff, a little, little going on there. It must be about time. Okay, Norman, it's been 40, well, your whole life, some of your ma's life. Here's your dad's old locomotive running here probably after maybe 50 years, I'm guessing, 50, 55 years. Wish I had a longer test track to put it on for you. This is all my little space has. About 12 feet. Mm -hmm. A little neutral. A little reverses. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. Try to save up. Give me one of them there sheds. So I can put uh, a whole layout inside of it. But I want a big shed, like a 16 by 40. Neutral. Yep, a lot of work I spent into this one. Holy moly, but it's, it's coming around. It's really doing what it's supposed to do. Glad it came out nice. Not real big on the smoke. Nope. Now that I got it running, all I got to do is box it up, ship it back to Norman. He's going to get the track set up, and him and his kids are going to sit down and let this thing run around a little bit. They want to check it out. Hopefully, it becomes a beautiful mantelpiece that operates, not a shelf queen. It's got to be a running shelf queen. But after it's been sitting around for 50 years or more, not running, I'm glad we got it going again, and Norman's got something to honor their memory of his dad. Happy Independence Day, you guys. I'm Ron, Classic Model Trains. Bye-bye.